killer. Goodness, I I don't I don't I I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. I, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm I'm at a just completely other shock and loss for lost for words. I uh, I'm, I'm recording this at like two o'clock in the morning. I just finished watching uh, the one hour special of Dragon Ball Super. And the episodes for this episode is going to be episode 109 and 110 on all different streaming platforms. So each episode is going to have their their own individual intros and their endings and next episode previews, of course. But uh, I, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and leave a link down in the description for people to go check out Verb. I'm not sponsored by Verb. But I want people to go check out Verve. Uh, these guys are, uh, are, are is a streaming platform for all to all different t types of anime right now. Uh, they also have like other st uh, just stuff like uh, Rooster Teeth and stuff like that. But Shinema, and then of course, most importantly, Funimation and Crunchyroll. And Crunchyroll, right now, it, their website is actually it's down because so many people were trying to watch Dragon Ball Super. The, the, this this one hour special Dragon Ball Super and I decided to go to Verve because I wanted to see if uh, Verve wasn't like down or anything and luckily they weren't because I I, I, I uh, this is gonna be a long video because I'm gonna I'm gonna it's gonna be very hard for me to, to want to talk and have stuff to speak but oh man I don't know what else to say about this one hour special these two episodes other than this is the first time ever in Dragon Ball Super not just Dragon Ball in general but just Dragon Ball Super where it has completely left me speechless a, a lot a loss for words for what I had just witnessed of course for those of you who have been uh, keeping up with the latest news and information for Dragon Ball Super, you you know that there have been leaks and information, of course, about Goku getting a new transformation, and people were naming this transformation Limit Breaker. Now, that wasn't obviously the con the confirmed transformation name, but people were calling it Limit Breaker. Uh, it shows Goku in his base form, and he's surrounded by this. Uh, this aura don't I don't really know how to explain the aura and then his eyes are a different color than normal from his normal black eyes uh, and then eyes uh, that's not like black eyes his black eyes and then uh, his like uh, greenish tint color when he's a Super Saiyan and then of course when his eyes are I'm pretty sure are blue when he's in Super Saiyan blue and then of course when his eyes are red when he's in Super Saiyan God transformation and Oh boy! <laughs> where to start? How about let's let's start from the very beginning, obviously. So when you when you're gonna be watching this, not on you're gonna you're not gonna be watching this on Fuji TV, because by the time you're gonna be watching this, the one hour special for, on Fuji TV is going to be over. There were pe there were people fortunate enough to actually watch the entire one hour special, of course. Uh, examples like geek them and stuff like that. And I actually there's actually a live stream that at the time of me recording he's doing right now. But uh, depending uh, if it's finished by the time I'm recording or if he's still doing it, e either or, I'm going to be leaving a link down in the description for that video of his stream because I want you guys to go watch it because he actually breaks down and debunks the Goku vs. Jiren fight. But anyways, let's get back to the topic at hand and we're going to start off with episode 109 of course. And the beginning of the episode, uh, it starts off with where we left off in the last week's episode, with the fight between Goku and Ribrian. And Ribrian, I already didn't like in the first place. This episode, in particular, in the beginning when we had to watch her uh, go into Super Ribrian and growing these wings, transformation, whatever. 
I felt like it was just completely unneeded, but we had to start off with something. And I guess this is the... I didn't mean to pull that up on my phone. <laughs> and I guess this was just the best thing that they could come up with. I have no clue, but... Oh man, afterwards, uh, afterwards of that, Goku is obviously, um, you know, winning against Ray Brienne. Ray Brienne's still putting up a decent fight, but, you know, Goku uh, knocks Ray Brienne from her Super Ray Brienne transformation over to Jiren. And Jiren's just standing there with his arms crossed and everything, just staring at Goku. Uh, Ribrian gives off a funny line. I'm not going to really go into it. This is mainly just the fight between Jiren and Goku. This this is what this is what this whole video is going to basically be consisting of. And oh my god. Oh, the fight starts off with Goku and, and Jiren, right? They're standing there. They're getting ready to fight. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Rem I'm trying to remember what honestly happened in the episode. Okay, so before Goku and Jiren fight, the Universe Eleven uh, God of Destruction is actually talking to Jiren uh, telepathically, telling Jiren to forget everybody else and just go after Goku. Just go after Son Goku and you know eliminate him. And then you know Goku's been obviously just wanting to be wanting wanting to fight this motherfucker since the beginning right we and we got what we wanted so the fight starts off with just Jiren kind of powering up I guess a little bit kind of giving off this force of energy that's literally shaking the whole arena and the entire world of void it's, it's honestly just it's, it's amazing it's absolutely just fucking stupid <laughs> it's absolutely stupid how much power Jiren is giving off in in this episode we didn't even see him go full power we didn't even see him go full power but and he was already pretty much showing that he was far beyond the uh, he, he, he had power much more stronger than Hakayashin or God destruction it, it was it was phenomenal but in the episode we actually do get a line from Topo and he's discussing about the fact that Jiren is here to win obviously but to obtain the Super Dragon Balls, so uh, Jiren is uh, possibly has a wish for something. I don't know. I don't know what. Uh, I was watching Geekdom stream. That's why I, I mentioned it earlier on in the, in the video. I was watching a stream and they were talking about maybe Jiren used to be a Hakaioshin, a god of destruction, and then he just didn't want the job anymore, so he stepped down and just became a fucking defender of the universe of universe 11 it's it's absolutely insane uh in the episode they, they kept on teasing the fact that jiren didn't have normal training obviously the, uh, when the fighting was going on as well uh, goku and jiren didn't have normal training but especially jiren his training <laughs> oh so goku shoots off a kamehameha at jiren jiren creates a barrier just you know keeping hold of the Kamehameha Goku goes into the Super Saiyan transformation charges at Jiren Jiren's just standing there taking punches and shit just doesn't just doesn't care he just stands there Goku goes Super Saiyan 2 he's uh, he's still doing a couple of more he's still you know attacking Jiren Jiren obviously isn't caring uh, Goku goes to Super Saiyan God, and then Jiren starts blocking his attacks with just one fucking finger. Just one finger, bro. His his one index finger. I I, I don't I don't know what else to tell you. He he just was fucking doing it. And then after that, Goku realizes that he needs to go into Super Saiyan Blue. He goes into Super Saiyan Blue, but this entire time Jiren is just honestly, from what you can tell. He's he's not he's not even trying he's he's not even trying he's just blocking blocking his attacks he's obviously retaliating back when he needs to retaliate back uh, Goku is going in and out between of the Kaioken or the King Kai Fist as they were doing it or as how they were translating in the Verve translations uh, he was going to times ten, and then in the episode he was actually going times twenty. And later on in the episode, when Goku actually reverts back into his base form, uh, before he did that, uh, Krillin was saying 
Goku still got a little bit more power. Uh, why doesn't he go Kaioken times 20 while I'm blue? He can do that. Uh, I don't I don't remember who said it, but either um, Beerus or we say that he was already using Kaioken times 20 and it still wasn't working. It still wasn't enough. Jiren is literally that powerful. So, you know, it, it reminded me a lot of the Frieza saga, not initially when I was watching it, but then I started thinking about it. And I was like, wow, that's like a lot about, that, that reminds me a lot about what happened on Namek in the Frieza Saga in Dragon Ball Z. Because as you know, Goku was going against, going against Frieza in his base form. He hadn't unlocked Super Saiyan yet. And he was going into times 20 to attack uh, <clears throat> Frieza. And although it seemed to be working, it still wasn't enough, right? So what, what happens after that? He uses a spirit bomb against Frieza, and that's exactly what we got in this episode. In this episode, we got the spirit bomb. Goku, for the longest time throughout these past couple of days, and even last week, people were wondering, where the hell is Goku going to get the energy to conjure up this fucking spirit bomb? So, uh, people who were in the arena, not the fighters of the, of the different universes, uh, just of Universe 7, they started lifting their hands up in the air, obviously, uh, giving Goku the energy that he needed to, uh, you know, make the spirit bomb. Uh, even Frieza gave Goku some of his energy as well, which uh, was kind of ironic because it's like, you know, it, it, it's like the, the dynamic saga, the Frieza saga, where uh, Frieza had gotten hit from the spirit bomb from Goku, you know, and the fact that he's giving this spirit bomb, this attack that got hit, that hit Frieza himself. The fact that he's giving it energy is honestly kind of funny to me. Um, even those at the, the the stands, I guess you can call it, uh, by, um, right next to the stage, Krillin, Master Roshi, and Tien, even they were giving uh, Goku energy for the spirit bomb, which if you think about it, technically that's actually outside interference. But I guess Zeno doesn't really care because it's a giant orb ball in the sky and it, it looks pretty and it's par pretty powerful. So <laughs> anyways, uh, Goku gets enough energy to make the spirit bomb and then, well, what else does he do besides throw it? He throws the spirit bomb at Jiren. He's in his base form the whole time because uh, Krillin was talking about uh, something about for whatever reason he couldn't do it in Super Saiyan. Uh, it doesn't really make that much sense to me, but regardless, that's it. Um, oh, I, I, I have to stop really quick. Uh, I had to stop really quick just to mention... I, I, I didn't mention the animation and the, the soundtrack in terms of music and quality and shit like that. I didn't talk about that in the beginning like I kind of always normally do or at the end of the video. I, I didn't do it yet because the animation and the soundtrack for these episodes and this one hour special on Fuji TV obviously was it, it was phenomenal. Um, there was there was types of information that uh, Geekdom in his own review had gotten. He didn't give out any names of who gave who gave him the information, but Geekdom had gotten information from someone uh, from uh, inside. He, uh, he was an insider of Toei, and he was saying that they were gonna put the top dogs of the animation team for Dragon Ball Super on this Goku vs. Jiren fight, especially on episode 110 when we actually do see this quote limit breaker technique and oh my god it's 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 fucking amazing the animation in this up in these two episodes in this one hour special it was phenomenal it was it was some of the best animation that i have ever seen period for dragon ball in dragon ball super i have i have not seen this good of animation in a while or even ever it I, I cannot tell you how beautiful, how how so much goodness was in the animation for this episode, these two episodes. It was phenomenal. And the soundtrack, you literally have to watch these two episodes to listen to the soundtrack for yourselves because they gave us uh, new Sumitomo soundtracks for Jiren and Goku versus Jiren themes and stuff like that. It, it, 
it was amazing. These were new soundtracks that we haven't heard before. They were phenomenal. I highly suggest that you watch these two episodes, not only just to see the fight, the animation, the new transformation, just characters fighting in general for each other, uh, at each other, but to, to pay attention to the soundtrack. I was watching the whole time. I was speechless. I was, I was, they were throwing me surprises left and right with this and that and I was, and then and the whole time I didn't pay attention to how good the soundtrack was I started paying attention to it and my jaw dropped to the ground because of how amazing the soundtrack was when Goku had went into his new transformation and started fighting Jiren it was it was incredible I I, I don't know what I don't know what other word to say other than incredible for the soundtrack so we go back to episode 109. I, I just had to point that out really quick. We go back to episode 109. Go, uh, Goku throws the spirit bomb. Jiren is holding it back with one hand. Uh, Goku obviously notices this isn't fucking working, so he goes into Super Saiyan Blue. Goku, uh, or Jiren rather, is, you know, he starts using two hands, which, you know, seems like um, it's a problem now because it is, because now. He's just single-handedly basic. He's basically single-handedly pushing the spirit bomb back at Goku. Goku's doing the same thing. He's in the Kaioken transformation. All that whilst in blue. The spirit bomb is just getting pushed back and forth, back and forth to these two powerful beings in this one tournament with this huge ball of energy from all the fighters of Universe 7. Jiren is now only just pushing the spirit bomb back just by glaring at the fucking thing. He's staring at it with his fucking eyes and he's pushing it back. Eventually, you know, the two forces of the clashes of the two most powerful energy that is going off right now. They're both pushing it back and forth, back and forth. The spirit bomb doesn't know what else to do other to, you know, inflate and ex and in explode upon it. It... it it had installation. I don't know what words to fucking use for Christ's sake. It imploded. It imploded upon itself and Goku was sucked up into the spirit bomb. He was sucked up in, into the spirit bomb. The spirit bomb was hitting Goku with with, uh, with uh, the energy from the spirit bomb, but Goku was trying to resist it with his own energy from the spirit bomb. And I'll get into, I'll get into why I was wording it like that. So Goku's trying to push back the energy from the spirit bomb. The spirit bomb is hitting Goku with the energy from the spirit bomb. Goku's eyes go uh, go white, and then he's just gone. The spirit bomb is gone. The uh, the energy of Genki itself is falling from the sky. They can't sense Goku. He's not visibly there. They, they don't know what happened. It, it's just it's just a it's just it's just a crater inside the. Uh, the arena and Jiren just looks down and crosses his arms and and he he's just uh, you know he he's he's secretly like damn I didn't want to have to resort to that but it did and Goku's just nowhere to be seen surprisingly Beerus is you know almost concerned he's he he shows an emotion that we've never actually seen from Beerus before in you know you know being concerned about Goku and I really like that. I really like that character development between the two characters of Beerus and Goku. It's just shown since, you know, Battle of Gods that Goku has been able to get under Beerus' skin. And they have almost, I guess, you can guess, I guess you can say, you know, friends. And he's showing concern. Can't sense him. Doesn't know what the fuck's going on. And uh, they started thinking to themselves... Like, wait, Jiren threw the attack back. That should be considered an elimination because if he had vaporized from the spirit bomb and Jiren was pushing it back, that should be an elimin that should be an elimination for Jiren, and he shouldn't be in the term uh, tournament anymore. But then they started thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense because that was actually Goku's own attack that he created, and all Jiren did was just push it back. So let's say if Goku had actually died from, you know, getting hit from his own spirit bomb, Jiren would not have been eliminated because that was Goku's own attack. So that basically means that if you get hit by your own attack, you're not going to be eliminated. Uh, if you get hit by your own attack, you know, dep depending on if you, if you knock yourself off the arena or you incap incapitate yourself, not sure what word I'm using. <laughs> You know, you eliminate yourself, and let's say if someone throws the attack back, 
you know, whoever threw that attack back in order to defend themselves, all they did was just defend themselves. If they're throwing back the attack that was used from someone else, they're not going to be eliminated. So anyways, they're there. They don't know what the hell is going on. Yada, yada, yada. Huge uh, beam of light shoots up into the sky and the world of void. And there's nothing else that it can be that everyone's just confident by now that it's actually just Goku. It's Goku and he has unlocked some kind of power. That's that's probably what viewers are thinking. He's unlocked some form of new power. Uh, Whis as Beerus, uh, if he's got anything to say, and and Whis, uh, not Whis, Beerus just utters a word, uh, just two words, and he says that he's coming. And then Goku shows up with the Limit Breaker technique that everybody has been just utterly excited about for these past couple weeks or, or really months. It's incredible. His eyes, his appearance, his energy, it's all just really calm. He's standing there. Roshi pointed it out that, you know, he was really calm in his transformation. He was giving off some form of heat, which we'll probably talk about a little bit later if I don't forget. So anyways, Goku's standing there, he turns around, he looks at Jiren, and he shows the audience, you know, the difference in his eyes. And he just doesn't, he doesn't utter a single word for the rest of this episode but, uh, until the very end. He doesn't utter one single episode until he goes back to fighting Jiren again. It, it, it's absolutely fucking incredible. Goku's giving off just this, this energy, and then Jiren just, st just starts walking towards, towards Goku. Goku throws a fucking kick! He moves so fast, he throws a kick, Jiren ducks the attack? <laughs> I've, I, uh, <laughs> uh, like I said, this is gonna be a long, long video. Go Goku throws a kick, Jiren ducks, Goku throws another attack. I'm I'm trying to remember what happened because I, I I only just watched this episode uh, like 30 minutes ago, 20, 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. Goku he he's throwing attacks. Um, Jiren is uh, moved away somewhere else. Uh, he's like in the crater ish, and then uh, Goku's just standing like a like a pretty fair distance away from Jiren. Uh, the other Pride Troopers, Dispo and Topo, they decide to go after Goku and help out Jiren. Goku just on they both throw attacks at Goku. Goku um, deflects the attacks away from. Dispo and Topo, and then Topo starts shooting off a Justice Flash. Goku's just walking through the fucking attack. He, he, it's not even fucking hurting him after that point. It, it's not doing fucking anything. Um, Jiren then actually is like, uh, wait, don't do anything. He gives him a sign to basically not do anything. They both start going at it. Goku and Jiren, they're throwing off attacks faster than the human eye can see. Even, even someone who's watching the episode and they don't even know what the fuck is going on they're moving so fast Vegeta and some of the Hakaioshin and even Kaioshin aren't aren't knowing what the hell is going on and then they start getting into what I guess I guess you can say the official transformation of the name that Goku had gotten in this episode is and they start saying this that or whatever Whis is like oh I know what it is and then Beers utters uh, a name of it, and it's called. Uh, I, I guess I guess I don't really remember what they call, what he called it. Uh, it's like Ultra Instinct. I think he, I think they called it Ultra Instinct. So uh, he says Ultra Instinct. That's I guess the confirmed name for the transformation. If you want to keep calling it Limit Breaker um, until we get like a like a confirmed confirmed translate uh, uh, transformation name, I guess I'm gonna call it Ultra Instinct. So. Goku has basically learned a, uh, a way of being able to move, you know, without thinking. <laughs> this transformation was was teased in leaks since, you know, Resurrection F when Whis was talking to Goku. You need to learn the art of being able to move without thinking. Whis was able to do that uh, on his own, and he was saying that Beerus himself. Uh, had struggles being able to do this. He couldn't even really do it. And then Goku showed off the ability of being able to do it in this episode with this transformation, Ultra Instinct. It, 
he was moving without even thinking. The battle continues off and <clears throat> I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm losing my breath. My throat is dry. The fight between Goku and Jiren uh, start going off more and more and more. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Goku finally says, "Screw you!" He throws a kick at Jiren's gut, and that seems to actually, you know, pretty hurt him pretty bad. And then he throws off uh, a huge, powerful blast at, G uh, at Jiren. Jiren's on the ground. Goku charges at Jiren. Um, they both clash fist, and then Goku's starting to run out of energy. He, he, you know, can't fucking move. After that point, Jiren shoots off a blast. Uh, after Goku gets sent off uh, flying away in the distance, Hit actually decides to go after. <laughs> Hit actually decides to go after uh, Jiren. And in the next episode, in uh, in the previews, it showed that that was going to happen. And then obviously there was leaks and information saying this. But the next episode, we're going to, we're going to be having Hit versus Jiren, which should be interesting because. Uh, a fight like this, I was kind of honestly thinking about wondering if it'll happen uh, since they kind of first initially met a couple episodes back. But uh, Goku gets Goku gets sent off flying. Uh, Jiren and Hit are about to get ready to fight each other. Uh, Vegeta is just wondering uh, and asking Goku, like, "What the fuck was that? What 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 the hell are you? What the hell were you doing over there? I, I, like, I, I'm confused. Can you tell me what the fuck just happened?" Goku doesn't know what the fuck happened. Reprian goes after Goku and Vegeta. Vegeta's like, whatever, just stay here, whatever. Uh, disappears. And we're wondering, wait, did Goku just move on his own for some reason? Or at least that's what I was thinking. No! We get one last scene at the end of the episode in the one hour special. And that's of Frieza. He's cloaked. And in darkness, and Goku's just laying there on the ground. It looks like Frieza is about to uh, hit Goku with a blast and kill Goku uh, when he's at his weakest. And it just ends off right there. It ends off right there. That's the end of the episode. That's the end of the one-hour special on food on uh, TV Tokyo Food TV. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of the episode. Now there were there was speculation that we're probably gonna get a situation with how it happened on Namek, because if you remember on Namek when Goku uh, was on Namek and he had defeated Frieza at the moment Goku gave Frieza some energy so that way he would be able to you know be able to move and get off of the planet. What I'm thinking and what other people are thinking is that Frieza is gonna basically return to favor and give Goku some energy so that way he could then at least be able to move. Now, honestly, that is the probably the most uh, likely scenario that's going to happen. Because I did watch uh, the next episode previews at the end of the episode, and Goku's still alive. He's still there. He's uh, he's not moving, uh, you know, quick around the arena or whatever. But you know, he's moving around. And he's alive. So obviously, that's what's most likely going to happen. That's the end of the episode, and that's the end of this video. Because there's something else that I really need to be talking about, other than Oh, oh man, just, just uh, other than the fact that this is the first ever thing to happen in terms of a one hour special for the Dragon Ball uh, series in our community, for the Dragon Ball community, it was, this is the first time it's ever happened and people are excited obviously. Uh, there's also the fact that we got a new transformation, Ultra Instinct, uh, Jiren being most likely powerful, uh, not even most likely, being definitely more powerful than a, a, a Hakaio Shin, Goku uh, probably being more powerful than a Hakaio Shin. Absolutely fucking insane. I, 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 I have no other words to say other than this episode was amazing, the fight and the choreography was amazing, animation was fucking amazing, the fucking soundtrack and the music from Sumitomo was absolutely phenomenal, it was fucking fantastic. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I, I have no other words other than I have no other words to tell you other than go to Verve, go to Crunchyroll. These links will be down in the description for you guys to watch. I want you guys to sit down and watch these episodes because this is something that Dragon Ball fans have been waiting for to happen and we finally got it and boy oh boy did they fucking deliver. What?
Anyways, that is going to be the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to drop a like. And if you're brand new to this channel, uh, consider hitting that red subscribe button for future content just like this. Uh, I hope you guys uh, loved and liked this episode as much as I did. Fantastic. Just fantastic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and end off the video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic day. And I'm out.